I feel like when when uh, they're a little bit closer, he goes inside. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing that. I can't see that when I'm out. Okay. So that's why I'm light. But I'll tr I'll work on that. Remember, going low is a good option for sure. But you right. still can go go back and up if you want. Right. Okay. There's advantages and disadvantages to both. Low is really good look. But what we have to guard against, and I've seen this with a couple of guys now, when you go low, now you have that little cockeyed thing, mm -hmm. and then you put your head looking through the catcher's head a little bit more than you want to. Hey, Ryan, just watching you warm up here, I know it's only warm-up pitches, but already I kind of saw a difference in your angle between your righty and lefty. Seemed like you were more squared up, and I'll pay more attention to this as we get going. But I know personally myself have the same exact problem where I don't get the same angle with righties and lefties. So I constantly have to check and balance on that and make sure they have the same angle of seeing pitches on both sides of the plate. I'm glad he told me he was squeezed on that too because that makes more sense, Dave. Looking from the side, we can't get perspective as to how the batter, where he's setting up because we're setting up off the batter we know. But you tell me you're squeezed shows to me that you're making an adjustment. That's why your head's lower. But like I just said previously, make sure that the angle of your right shoulder doesn't take your head behind the catcher's head, uh, behind his head and mask, so you can't see that low outside, which is the one that we always want to see. All right, as a crew, as a teaching situation here, where do we stand in between innings? Um, well, Ryan is now is a good position, okay? But just consider this. Um, a guy I worked with this year, suggested that we stand back back towards the backstop maybe 15 to 20 feet back maybe near the batter circle over in that general area for a couple of reasons you're out and away from everybody also if you have a situation where you end an inning on a, uh, a disputed called third strike or something that someone's going to be upset with you about now that person has to go all that distance to say something to you when we're standing on the lines we actually put ourselves in the firing line these guys can come directly at us, which makes them not look as bad as if they have to change and alter their path to walk all the way across the diamond to get us back to the backstop. Just something to consider. All right, Paul, all eyes are on you. Good starting position. Looks like a kid who might be able to steal. Oh, right, huh? Called that one, didn't I? There you go, Joe. Way to beat Joe's up. All right. We had that all in video, didn't we, Danny? Danny, go, go, go on the move. Take a turn, take a turn. Good eye. All right, Tony, once that ball gets past the catcher, you can go ahead and trail in behind. That way, Will can release to third base, okay? We talked about that yesterday. With a pass ball wild pitch, you can trail that guy immediately once the ball gets past the catcher through the hitting zone and to the, the fence, to the backstop. Trail right in behind immediately. Yeah! That's a great call right there. I think I could see from here he never tagged him. And you got over there. Mike, good job of trailing. Even though most likely there isn't going to be a playback to second, but if there's a rundown or something stupid happens, you're there. So good job as a crew. Paul, way to get there and get a good look at that and great timing to see the slide. Okay. Ryan, be aware you have a runner on third base something I have trouble with as well. Just think about possibly not looking to the side when you're calling that strike. All right, come on. Or take a peek to third base to make sure that run around third base isn't coming home before you go to the side. Like I said, that's something I battle as well as I look to the side, but just be aware of the fact that he's there. That fly ball that was hit, this last one. the guy had to lay out, yeah. Get used to shooting in on that. He, sh he should have crossed over. Well, that was an opportunity where he could, and yeah. none of us are comfortable. I've had to work at getting comfortable. I, I've told guys all week long there are at least five fly balls this spring that I should have gone from the middle on, but I hesitate. And then, unfortunately, we psych ourselves out when we don't do things right away. Yeah. And they're like, oh, man, I should have gone. But that's an opportunity where he could have gone, okay? If he does... You have to guard against that immediately. Now, you're fast and can get there, and you'll chase him down. But once you see the ball, any trouble like that, when there's any opportunity, and, and quite honestly, let's make this simple. Anytime the ball is hit in his coverage area, unless it's a can of corn, just get used to taking a couple of steps this way, and then you're guarding against it. Up. 
All right, we oh, got a tag up. There we go. Four, four, four. four. Cut. Three. Look at three. I got three. Oh, go, 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 go. Get him, get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. All right. All right, guys, All right. this is a prime opportunity. Tony, for you to shoot behind on the outside of second base, now we can bracket this guy within a rundown, okay? Um, third base umpire was outside, you can go inside. That aids sometimes there is a tag on the back that the guy, even though it's coming to, may not see. So with two umpires in this rundown, don't get sucked into it. Stay back, keep one guy inside, outside to bracket. You're really gonna like what you're seeing on the plate. You keep doing this. You're going to be very successful calling balls and strikes. All right, this is comical and has a point too. Guys, if you're playing umpire and you can't throw the ball well, don't throw it to the pitcher. Give it to your catcher, Ryan can throw. Whenever you guys saw me trying to play first base yesterday, you'd realize I'm not an athlete anymore, so I give the ball to the catcher. Get there. Get there. Oh, okay. All right, Paul. Fighting two-man tendencies there, all right? There's no reason to look back to first base, especially that quick. Okay, you stay right in there. You make sure you voluntarily release, secure possession, all that stuff. Then your focus is on that, on that slide. Little things we can do in communication on the baseball field. Something as simple as asking for baseballs. Please and thank you will get you a long way in this game. And it may seem a little bit picky, but hey guys, can I have three baseballs, please? Thank you. They bring them out, whoever it is, coach, little bat boy, player, whoever it is. Hey, thanks, I appreciate it. You'd be surprised how just showing the fact that you're personable and polite on the baseball field, you're approachable, goes a long way. Something as simple as asking for baseball. Um, you guys may have seen a partner once in a while who's just, I don't know, very stern or grumpy or comes across in that way. Even the way you ask for a baseball can be perceived in a certain way. So when you guys think that guys aren't looking for things or not viewing how you act, your body language, how do you communicate, even something as simple as asking for baseballs can give off a positive or negative perception of you before you've even done anything. All right, as a crew, what are we thinking about here? Let's check our signals, see what we're doing. All right, obviously we got the infield fly. Now as an umpire, crew-wise, there's things I'm thinking about. Mike, I'm thinking about making sure once the ball leaves the infield, a batted ball, that I'm getting into a cutout a pivot spot so I can do one of two things, rotate home or push Paul. Let's see what we got here. There we go, you did it. Boom, boom, go take him. Get outside, Paul. Hey, good job. Good. Mike, swing behind like you're doing. Phenomenal. Dan, did you get that? I know you got that because you're so good. Man, the crew looked phenomenal on that. Nice. Nice crawl. Good job, Tony. Just be careful you don't come set too soon. We'll see it on the video, but it appeared just looking at the end of that play that um, there was a potential for the ball maybe to take him off the base. So make sure you read a good throw on that before you come to your set. Don't set too soon. Nice. Okay. Yeah. All right, on this play, Ryan, identify that your first base umpire went out on that fly ball, okay? So as a plate umpire, sometimes we have to identify where the ball's hit and look at partners, okay? So we do have a rotation on that, but be aware of the fact here now that you have to bounce back home because you no longer have support from first base on buyer went out on the fly ball. Think about every step you make on the baseball field with a purpose. Up, 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 up. Go. Good, Mike. Good, 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 good. All right. Mike, now that you live up my way, or I don't care where you live, but for me personally, it's because I'm old. I can do an a umpire school pivot, but doing that umpire school pivot just takes your eye off the ball, I think, too much. I, I don't know what Alex and Darren, I'm sure they don't care which way you pivot, but just come right across and don't pivot. Just come straight across. Keep your eye on the ball the whole time. 
and then just glance over your left shoulder, see if he touches, make sure there's no obstruction or any nonsense going on over here. Um, I just think that coming straight across now keeps your eye on the baseball and gives you, you know, your knowledge of status of the baseball more than if you do that nice pivot. Because the pivot generally, I mean, there's no doubt about it, it's going to take your eye off the ball longer than if you just come straight across and do the quote unquote triple A pivot. Just a thought. All right, Tony, what I want you to do on that is anytime the ball is hit in the air, I want you to square up to the fair foul line, put your chest out towards that scoreboard or out to left center, okay? So now you can see, first off, what area of the field, what coverage it's in. And if it's in your partners, it's in Wills, and you have to look at him to see what he does. Square up. There you go. All right, that's not a bad read. All right, he's coming in hard. Yes, he caught it at his chest. But I think if on that one, if you square up and look and don't move immediately, you may see that he caught that ball with relative ease. Yes, he ran in, and that's what you saw. But if we slow down a minute and see that that ball is going to be caught right around his chest level, then maybe you don't go. No problem with going on that. He's coming in hard, but take a look at it a little bit longer. Remember, you have extra time because you have a three-man system and you have a plate umpire that's going to cover your backside if you decide to go out. We're going to help our umpires, our plate umpires on that. Don't, don't, don't disguise it. If, if you have a catch on the third strike, then put your hand all the way out. If you don't, open hand like that. I thought for years that I was actually fooling people and nobody knew what we were doing. Any coach that knows anything about coaching knows that we have this signal. So don't disguise it and don't make your umpire, plate umpire, have to search to see it. Just throw it right out there. All right. All right. Okay. I can live with that. All right. In the NCAA, that's a good job. We got a, a slow breaking pitch coming in with no movement. I absolutely agree with that. We'll see it on video. And we can break that down. But initially, I don't have a problem with that at all. That's the one he can definitely get out of the way of. All right, post pitch steps too, okay? Remember we talked about what's the situation they're gonna throw behind? All right, there you go. Now looking at all of the information here, what kind of a lead does he have? Well, it's a pretty good lead considering that there's a run ahead of him. There we go. The ball's gone through the hitting zone. You're stepping to where you need to be. What did we say yesterday? Maybe 9 out of 10, nothing's going to happen. But that 1 out of 10, when I throw down, you want to put yourself in a position to see it. All right, what do we have, Tony? You've got to get in the pivot spot on that one. All right. Again, you were on the plate on that one, right? All right, Ryan, make sure that you're working off of that catcher, okay? You're right up on him. That way you can move with him. At the, on that play right there, it seems like you're a bit deep, and you weren't really in a position, a good position, to get yourself into that wedge. So stay right on him and move where he moves, all right? I like what I see on that one, Ryan. That's a good job of stepping up, following the catcher. You got yourself right in that wedge. That was a very good job. We talked about it earlier. Watch your lips. Danny, don't think for a second I wasn't going to dive in front of that camera <laughs> to protect, protect the COG brand. And I'm not going to lie to you, to protect my, uh, my audio future. The camera's down, I don't get to, to talk and ramble on like I usually do.